We didn't come together as a business entity at all. Um, we came together because Daniel was jonesing for musicians to work with. Um, I was not looking to be in a band. I was just doing my own thing. Carlos was not looking to play music, period, anymore. He was out of music altogether. Uh, and our original drummer is another story. But Daniel just sort of approached, he knew me, you know, uh, as an acquaintance and didn't know Carlos at all, but just kind of had a feeling as a guy who really, Daniel's not that social or extroverted at all. So he kind of went out on a limb because he was fed up of just not having anyone to work, you know, on material with. And as I said, I wasn't interested, but Carlos was on board and I went to see what they were working on with the original drummer and was just like, shit, you know, I don't, I don't want to be in a band, but this is really, really good music. And, you know, the second I was there, I felt like picking up a guitar and contributing something. So that, I was just drawn to it because of the music, but that, that isn't to say that we did anything as a business venture, like, because the kind of music we were doing then, there was absolutely no... Um, wasn't the kind of music that was likely going to make an impact or make us successful. It's just about the need to make music and, the, you know, for me, the magnetism to the music that we were making. But as far as our success from that point, so the inception is purely artistic and just based out of respect and passion for music. The reason why we're as successful as we are is entirely due to the fact that Daniel has incredible um, sense of the, uh, the way things work industry-wise. I have absolutely none and would by no, like, there's no way you'd be inter interviewing me if it was just a solo thing because I've got no business savvy whatsoever. And there are things that you should and shouldn't do and Daniel's instincts have been, like, impeccable all the way. So, like, in the very beginning days, for instance, like, just don't play too much. A lot of bands, when they start out, they play, like, every week or they, get, they take every gig they get, but who's going to go? You know, your best friends only have so much patience for your music, however good it is. So if you, like, play once a month, you're going to keep, you know, an audience coming if you play once every week no matter how much people like you they're not going to make it every show and so it's really important that each time you play like hopefully you have a few more people or at least not less people but if you just burn out and burn all your you know, like your friends and fans out in the beginning that's not a good way to start so it's like pick your gigs wisely and time them well uh, in the very beginning that's a good way to do it the other I mean the only instinct I ever had is that like persistence is the only thing that matters most people just f*** out and give up and like we did it for four or five years before we even got signed by Matador. So you just need to, if you're doing something that you believe in, just you keep. But I was big in a Nintendo as a kid. Um, big in a Nintendo. Uh, Metroid. Greatest game, greatest music in any video game. Um, but I was never into Zelda, strangely. Mike Tyson, Double Dribble. Now I have a PC, PSP which is, in my opinion, that's like alien technology from the future. The perfect, the perfection of ergonomics. Like, it literally can't be improved on. It's funny when you see, like, sort of handheld technology like that, where you can kind of see, oh, in a couple of years this will be better. It, like, can't be improved on. It's, it's like, a hundred years ahead of its time. The PSP is unbelievable.